lot more and we'll be a lot more specific as we have uh, uh, time available to us to make those decisions and to acquire the information required. Senator, what should the United States do now in, by way of retaliation? Well, I think the most important thing we can do now, uh, first and foremost, is to recognize the tremendous loss, Judy, that uh, has been experienced. I don't think uh, anyone ought to minimize that, and any time we talk about future action, we've got to go to where the, the real tragedy lies, and that's with the loss of families and the loss of, 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 of so much of human life in, recent, uh, in the last 24 hours. Beyond that, I think it's important for us to gather all of the information. Uh, I think everybody is so angry they want to hit somebody, but before we hit somebody, we better know who the somebody is. We better have our facts, we better have our information, and we better have a plan. Senator, as I'm talking to you, we're looking at pictures of President Bush uh, visiting the Pentagon a little while ago, uh, meeting with uh, employees there, uh, obviously offering his condolences, uh, talking to people, uh, having inspected the damage. This, uh, this footage we just got, and we're showing, showing our viewers uh, these pictures. Uh, Senator, while we look at uh, these, these shots of the President uh, visiting the Pentagon, People are asking, I hear what you're saying about wanting to make sure that everything is done to take care of the victims. Of course, we all feel that way. But there is a strong feeling that, uh, and it's been expressed uh, not just by the administration, but by others, that the United States cannot let something like this stand. And my question to you is, what does that mean? Well, we will not let it stand. We will punish the perpetrators. We will take action, and we will show our resolve. But I think we, as we have in so many cases in the past, we have to be smart about it. Uh, we knew who the enemy was that bombed Pearl Harbor. We know who the enemies are in most cases involving war. I think we need to ensure we can identify the enemy, identify the locations of the enemy, and make sure we've got a plan put into place that will allow us the maximum degree of ability to punish those responsible. That can't happen tomorrow. It can happen within the next uh, uh, couple of days for sure, but uh, it will happen. I think we just have to ensure that we have all of the pieces together prior to the time we make it happen. But, Senator, when the President, when Secretary of State Powell and others say, we are not just going to go after the terrorists, we're going to go after those who are harboring the terrorists, don't we have a pretty clear idea of what countries, what states have harbored, have offered aid and comfort to these people? Well, I think there is a general understanding of, of that. Uh, obviously, uh, as we look to what we're going to do now, we're going to have to take that into account. And that is part of this fact-gathering process that must now be underway. But clearly, uh, we've got to have more than just that, some vague notion of where these terrorists have lived in the past. We've got to know with a lot more precise detail what exactly we're going to do about it and what warning we're going to give and what actions may be required of those who may still be harboring terrorists today. But, uh, Senator, at the same time, I'm hearing calls and reading calls from those who say, uh, we, we shouldn't wait for the judicial process to work its way, for there to be a long, drawn-out investigation and, and a court proceeding, that the United States needs to move more quickly than that. Well, I don't know that, uh, I, that I disagree with uh, much of that. I do think, though, that it is important for us to ensure that we do this smartly. I'm not saying do it with every uh, legal question answered because we may not be able to resolve all of these questions legally, but we do have a responsibility to do it correctly and to do it swiftly, but do it with all of the facts, and that's exactly what I think this country is doing today. What do you mean by swiftly? Can you put some sort of timetable on No, I think it would be a mistake to put a timetable arbitrarily on whatever actions we're going to take. We know it's going to be done. We know actions will be taken. We just ought to be patient but also continue through other actions to show our resolve. We did that today on the Senate and House floor. We are going to continue to do that in our work and cooperation with the President of the United States and this administration. Senator, I'm talking to you as we've just been continuing to watch the raw footage, uh, pictures of President Bush uh, visiting with uh, employees, both military and civilian at the Pentagon. And I want to apologize to our viewers. Those pictures were pretty shaky. And as I say, it was unedited. We aired it just as it came in. One final question, uh, uh, Senator Daschle. How long is this spirit of cooperation between uh, your party, the Democrats, and the Republicans going to last in the aftermath 
of this terrible tragedy. Well, Judy, on matters pertaining to this crisis, I hope it lasts until the very, very last moment it's required. We have a new day, a new crisis, a new challenge, and I think, therefore, a new responsibility. And we're going to live up to that responsibility to the very best of our ability, regardless of how long it may take. And finally, when does the Congress get back to business? We're going to take up the uh, Commerce and State Justice Appropriations Bill tomorrow. That was the pending business on Monday, and we hope to complete it this week. All right, Senator Tom Daschle, who was the majority leader in the United States Senate, thank you very much. Good to see you, Senator. For more on the, in the aftermath of this tragedy that has shaken all of us, uh, for more now on the emotions of the people who have been affected by it, CNN's Candy Crowley now. At daybreak, the nightmare was still there, smoldering and burning, defying the imagination, thwarting rescue efforts, and testing an untested president. The United States of America will use all our resources to conquer this enemy. We will rally the world. We will be patient, we will be focused, and we will be steadfast in our determination. This battle will take time and resolve, but make no mistake about it, we will win. Eight months in office, President George Bush is already writing what may be the most important page of his own legacy. In an unusual revelation, officials said both the White House and Air Force One may have been targets. The news sheds some light on the president's first hours following the attacks when, instead of returning immediately to Washington, he flew from Florida to a military base in Louisiana and then another in Nebraska. Today in both New York and Washington, the precarious nature of the rubble and the hellish heat of the fire frustrated attempts to reach the wounded, the dying or the dead. Still, in Manhattan, they rescued, alive and reasonably well, nine firefighters and police officers who had been buried beneath the debris. Their recovery fueled a round-the-clock search that runs mostly on adrenaline and hope. I think once the cranes and the iron workers start getting the big, uh, big stuff out of the way, we can get in there and do some uh, you know, nitpicking and maybe find some guys. There's a lot of voids, it seems, down there, so maybe there are some guys available. But at the Pentagon, hope is gone. Officials say whoever might have survived the concussion of the plane's impact could not have lived through the fires that came after. There's no official estimate of how many lives were lost at the Pentagon or the World Trade Center. Authorities say they don't know, but everybody knows it will be awful. The FBI says it's identified most of the suicidal terrorists on the planes. Now they search for those behind down. the mayhem. We also have identified through a number of leads principally at the cities of origin, a number of individuals whom we believe may have had something to do with the hijackings, and we are pursuing those leads aggressively. It is a very public manhunt. The FBI conducted a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder search for evidence outside the Pentagon. Authorities in Providence, Rhode Island halted and boarded a Washington-bound Amtrak train, detaining at least one passenger. A SWAT team descended on a Boston hotel in search of suspects. No arrests were made. Authorities also searched a Vero Beach, Florida home and questioned others in the southern Florida area. The visibility of the efforts backs up the clear message from all arms of the federal government. We will find out who is responsible for this and they will pay for it. I guess I'm uh, kind of old fashioned. I'm inclined to think uh, that uh, if you're going to cock it, you throw it. Terrorism's reach goes far beyond the areas of immediate destruction. The nation's airliners still aren't flying as the FAA institutes new security requirements and carriers search for ways to comply. Wall Street remains closed, and for a second evening, there'll be no Major League Baseball, the all-American pastime canceled by this un-American horror. Symbolically, personally, financially, the country is so wounded. The totality of the loss is incomprehensible, but the details are unbearable. Someone on the 104th floor worked for the good firm of Cantor and Fitzgerald. We can't find hardly anybody from that firm who called his parents, told them he loved him, and they haven't heard from him since. There are stories like it everywhere. People knowing they are about to die, calling home to say I love you. People running for their lives and then stopping to carry a stranger to safety. The story here is that what prevailed in the final moment in the face of death is not fear or hate, 
but love and courage. Candy Crowley, CNN, Washington. And those are the stories that bring us down and lift us up at the same time. Our Jonathan Carl was reporting just a little while ago, and I also was talking with House uh, Democrat, or sorry, Senate Democratic Leader Tom Daschle a minute ago about appropriations to pay for. FBI Director Bob Mueller said after identifying all the hijackers, his next step is to retrace their steps. And we are attempting to recreate the, the uh, travels of each of the hijackers on the planes, either the hijackers themselves or their associates. Back up! And the search for those associates was in full fury today, with FBI SWAT teams storming a Boston hotel to search a room believed used by one or more of the hijackers. No one connected with the hijackings was arrested there or later when authorities stopped a train near Providence, Rhode Island. Officials were also focusing on two aviation schools in Florida and appeared to zero in on two recent Arab students. Residents say agents specifically asked about a man named Mohammed Atta and another named Marwan Yusuf Al-Shihi, both of whom had their commercial pilot multi-engine licenses recertified in June. Venice, Florida resident Charles Voss said he told agents he rented a room to the two men a year ago. Mm, well, they told me that they, you know, that these two persons were... In ...the airplane, such as driving it around the sky, uh, it's, it's not that much different. Were Ada and his cousin legally in this country? That's something the FBI is now tracing. But flight school owner Rudy Deckers says he was suspicious. Uh, we don't think that these people came in a normal way, not that we can know that, but uh, the normal way is that they get a permit to, uh, to uh, enter. And a few of them are in reviews in the last couple of years, and that's okay by us. Uh, these people uh, came at our door and wanted to get training done. And, uh, you know, what can you do? I mean, it's, for us, it's a customer. The FBI today visiting an apartment in Coral Springs, Florida, where Otta once lived. Can you tell us if you found anything? No, oh, ma'am, no comments today. At the same time, in Hamburg, Germany, another address used by Otta. Police there leaving with evidence. By all accounts, in Germany and in Florida, Otta and his cousin kept to themselves, except for last Thursday at this bar in Hollywood, Florida. It's believed both men came in, drank heavily, and then refused to pay the bill. FBI agents showing Otta's passport photo to bar staff and listening to the manager recount the argument. If there's an issue where you can't pay your bill or something, just, just tell me, okay? Let's, let's stop, you know, let's cut to the chase here. And the guy got, like, very, very offended, and he, he said to me, he said, oh, I can pay my bill. I'm, a, I'm an airline pilot. And I was like, okay. And that's what I told the, told the FBI agents, and they were like, oh, really?